for this special meeting of the Grants Management Advisory Committee. Um, we are here. Backo, um, NOFO. And so I will call the meeting to order. Connie, can you take um, roll, please? Absolutely. Um, so when you hear your name, if you'll just please say present. Amy Kelly. Ali Caliendo. Shayla Holmes. Diane Thorkelson. Present. Stacy York. Present. Les, uh, Leslie Fiddleson. Present. Lisa Janassi. Present. Present. Shirley Trummel. Present. Amber Bosket. Fernando Serrano. Present. Tom McCoy. Present. Fred Schultz. Diane, you Fred, have. You're on mute, Fred. Do we have Fred Schultz? It shows that he's here, but um, I don't hear him. <laughs> uh, good morning. I do, see I do see him. All right, so Diane, you do have quorum. Um, Excuse me, can you hear me? You? Hi there, who's speaking? This is Diane Thorkelson. Whoever just tried to speak, we can hear you, but there's a terrible echo. And if you're a commission member, could you identify yourself? This is Amy Kelly. Thank you, Amy. I apologize for being oh. late. Oh, that's okay. We haven't even really gotten started. We were just doing um, roll call. So kind of okay, perfect thanks. timing. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, this is Diane Thorkelson for the record. We will move on to um, our second agenda item, which is public comments. Um, as you all can see, I'm back on my phone. I'm still having trouble with this, with accessing these on my computer, this meeting on my computer. So Connie, if you can um, manage the public comment as I cannot see anything. Absolutely. For anyone that may be on the line that would like to um, provide public comment, if you'll please use the raise hand feature that's located at the top of the um, Teams platform. Diane, we had someone um, in the chat who had stated they wanted to provide public comment, but we are not seeing any raised she, hands. She does have her hand up, Connie. It's Kelly Seals. All right, if you'll call those that have their hands up, please. Go ahead, Kelly. Hi, thank you very much. Um, my name is Kelly Goatley Seals for the record. I am the current president of the Nevada Tobacco Prevention Coalition, and I'd like to speak this morning on behalf of NTPC members, including tobacco prevention and control partners statewide. Um, thank you for having this special meeting um, af so quickly after it was left off of the last one. We, we appreciate this being heard today. Um, tobacco prevention and control in Nevada has been chronically underfunded when compared with the CDC recommendations for our state's population. Um, this GMAC committee oversees the FHN funds that support tobacco prevention, but if you aren't aware, last biennium tobacco partners received additional funding from SB 263 to address youth youth vaping in our state um, and great progress has been made on that including a statewide campaign developed to decrease youth initiation and use of vapor products 
um, with more than 1 million engagements made with teens on social media. We additionally developed a website for parents to learn how to talk to their teens about this topic. There was partnerships with tobacco retailers to provide training, support, and signage to educate those retailers and staff on compliance with minimum age of tobacco sales. Over 300 visits were made, over 5,000 point of sale signs were provided, and we saw a 10% decrease prior to the pandemic in retailer violations for selling to minors. We were able to do counter marketing and outreach at teen focused venues like schools and community events and the Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health infrastructure was increased to support and evaluate youth prevention efforts and oversee the enforcement and compliance efforts with retailers. Additionally, we engaged over 60 statewide youth advocates to film a mini documentary on Nevada's teen vaping epidemic. And so that's a little bit about what we've done in, in that area. Um, but tobacco use and exposure in general is the leading cause of preventable disease, disability, and death in the US. About 34 million US adults smoke and 58 million non-smokers are exposed to secondhand smoke. In addition, tobacco use causes many chronic diseases, which increases COVID complications. And what I'm here to ask today is to support the investment and progress that Nevada has um, been making in tobacco. We have asked those for those funds that were initiated last biennium. We have a request out to continue some of that funding, but specifically for GMAC, I would like um, to ask that GMAC explore funding additional tobacco prevention funds in Nevada through the Nevada Clinical Services or NCS partnership, which is creating cost savings and resulting in additional funds being made available to the FHN fund pot. Um, when the new partnership was begun with NCS about four years ago, tobacco partners were told that the funds saved or reverted would be used to further provide support for tobacco control efforts. Um, it has not been consistently happening and information received from the state recently shows that for um, last fiscal year over one million dollars was reverted to FHN from tobacco funds and the projections for this fiscal year are similar. And so once again, I would like to ask that the GMAC bring this forward to a future meeting to explore these reversion funds being assigned to tobacco prevention where it is so sorely needed. Thank you for your time. Are there any other public comments? Cindy, are you seeing any other hands raised? You're on mute. Sorry, no, I don't see any other hands. Thank you. Diane, that's that'll be it for public comment. This this go round. <laughs> Great, thank you. And I am um, finally online here so I can see everybody. Um, that will move us to our third agenda item, which is approval of the minutes from our April 15th meeting. Um, we all received those via email. So um, if I have a motion for approval. This is Leslie, so moved. Fernando, second. Awesome, any uh, discussion? All right, all those in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right, excellent. That moves us to our fourth uh, agenda item, which is the presentation of the committee recommendations for funding on of this NOFO. Um, Connie, I'm not sure who is making the presentation. We have uh, Lily Helzer from the Division Great. of um, Public and Behavioral Health. Great, Lily, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. This is Lily Helzer for the record with the Division of Public and Behavioral Health, Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion section here to make the recommendation. Hey. To provide this summary, um, an RFA was released at the total award amount of $950,000. 
it's a two-year award, July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, and it was eligible for local health districts for Washington and Clark County and any nonprofit or public agencies providing tobacco control services in other counties. The RFA was divided into two separate components. Component one with a maximum of $765,000 with the goals to prevent initiation, promote smoke-free jurisdictions, promote quitting among youth, and increase quality referrals to the state quit line. Component one was formula-based per the RFA. And component two, which had a minimum funding amount of $35,000 to promote statewide collaboration. In assessing the applications from Southern Nevada Health District, Washoe County Health District, Carson City Health and Human Services, and Partnership Douglas County, the applications, pardon the background noise, um, working from home, <laughs> but um, the applications did achieve statewide coverage. The committee, the evaluation committee met one time to review and discuss the rec um, the applications, pardon me. Based off of this, the total budget recommendations for component one totaled the $765,000 allowable with a recommendation of $132,000 to Washoe County Health District, $437,000 to Southern Nevada Health District, 128,000 to Partnership Douglas County. Dude, you'd never believe that he's been quiet all day, sorry. Um, and 68,000 to Carson City Health and Human Services. For component two, there again, I'd just like to reiterate that there was a minimum funding of $35,000. Based on the application that was received, only Southern Nevada Health District applied for component two funding. And so the committee recommended that they receive $80,000 to support statewide collaboration. I, that is the summary and the recommendations. I believe everyone was provided with um, materials showing abstract and purposes for each of the applicants. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And again, um, I just appreciate your patience with uh, the noise making. Thank you. Thank you, Lily, and um, no apologies necessary. He's a cutie patootie. Um, any questions from uh, committee members? All right, um, seeing and hearing none, I will entertain a motion for approval of the subcommittee's recommendations. This is Tom, so moved. Is there a second? This is Fred Schultz, I'll second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries unanimously. We, our next agenda item is for other business. Um, do we have any other business? The grants management unit does not have any additional business. All right, seeing none, we'll move to the second period of public comment. Um, please, as we did just a few minutes ago, use the raise hand function, uh, avoid duplicative comments, and um, please try to limit your comments to about three minutes. Cindy, do you see anybody with raised hands? I don't see any public comment. Raise hands. All right. Well, this was a super speedy meeting. We have moved all the way to adjournment. <laughs> uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? This is Leslie. So moved. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today.
um, on this special meeting. And we'll see everyone in a couple of months. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.